Greetings, you two. I hope you'll forgive the poor lighting. I didn't want to disturb Mandarin. She's comfortable and making little grunty sounds. Um, she's adorable. Um, I wanted to talk today about low-level encounters, primarily in fantasy settings, but I may talk about other settings as well. And the kind of things that we throw at players when they are very new. So in D&D terms, you're probably talking like the first one to three levels. Um, the systems that don't use levels, you're talking about when you've got very low skills, um, you're not particularly adept in anything, one particular thing. You may have one particular thing you're you're focusing on, but everything else is going to be very low level. Um, and sometimes I found myself trying to find things that were appropriate. But over time, I came to realize that the encounters that we have in the real world make really appropriate low-level encounters in a fantasy setting. One of the first things is just simple mysteries. You can't find something or someone. That kind of low-level thing can drive an adventure when people you're trying to do I mean, short-term stuff too. It could be like an A session. Your character is trying to locate an item. Um, for example, uh, I had one campaign where they were all starting on a farm. Um, one of the people in the group was blood kin to the farmer and, farmer, and the rest were all refugees from a past orc attack that had killed their parents. And the farmer had taken them in and fostered them. And they decided they wanted to go out in the world and become adventurers. The problem is, is that the farm they were staying on was a farm. There wasn't a lot of equipment for adventuring just lying around. So they had to come up with some resources to manufacture the equipment that they needed. Um, but there also wasn't just huge supplies of raw materials. So they had to go and find the raw materials to make the things that they needed. And one of the things they lacked was metal. But one of the player characters was a druid. Um, and because of this, it spent a lot of time outside the farm in the wilds, gathering things, and that, that, that basically was their job, was bringing things from the wild in to the farm that could not be cultivated trapping, things like that, and um, had noticed that there was an old wagon stuck in a small pond, and the tale was that, you know, there was some kerfuffle, and the wagon got stuck, or flooded, you know, I can't remember the exact details, but the wagon was there, people in the area knew it was there, people pretty much ignored it, but the tires on this particular wagon, at least one of them, were bound in metal, iron. And enough of that was there that they should be able to take the iron off and be able to forge a couple of functioning weapons. Particularly, one of the player characters needed a sword or wanted a sword. So they had to go there to get the wagon wheel. So they get there with tools and things and uh, some very basic weapons, mostly of wood. Um, and when they arrived, I gave them the lay of the land, or the case, in this case, the lay of the pond. Um, and I had pre printed out a picture that I had below my GM screen, and I, I prefer to use a GM screen, so I had a GM screen, you know, right in front of me, and when the characters began to actually think about, okay, who's going to go in, who's going to get this, how are we going to do this kind of thing, because there, there was going to be a, a, an effort to, have to get multiple people in there, you have to figure out how to get this wheel off, or at least break the wheel so that you get the band off, you know, it was a task, and as they enter the water, I went below my screen, and then I snapped the picture forward. And the picture was a snapping turtle, a real-world snapping turtle, but the photographer had taken it at very close range. And it, and it was in a wide-angle lens, so it was almost looming over your head when you're looking at the picture. So I slapped this thing up and said, this thing comes out of the water at you. And then they had to fight this. It was a giant snapping turtle, not as big as a dragon turtle or something, but it was a very large... Uh, uh, snapping turtle, um, just outside what you would find in the real world. And um, they defeated it eventually, did harm some of them, and not only did they then have access to the pond and were able to get what they wanted, but the druid was able to harvest the turtle for not only meat, but the shell became his shield. So I, this is how they were able to get that. But other sort of things, just wild dogs are good. A single rabid animal can make a very good low level encounter, encounter because while the animal themselves uh, is not necessarily significantly more dangerous than a non rabid version of that animal, they're dangerous because they carry rabies. Um, and they're going to be acting in very unpredictable manners. So that kind of thing can also be useful. 
Um, fetch quests are also useful. You need to go get X, Y, and Z so they can then do something. I just described essentially one with that wagon in the in the pond. Um, but these kinds of real world problems and low level encounters. For example, they encountered a farmer that said he was his farm was being haunted. So they got there, and it does in fact that there was it was being haunted by a spirit bull. And they're like, why is there a ghost bull here? Okay, and this the, this ghost bull had killed one of the farmer's sons for real. So it was a dangerous creature, a dangerous spectral being. And after digging a little bit, they found out that the, a bull, a live one, had killed one of the farmer's children years ago, and. In revenge, he had taken the bull, put it into an old barn on the property, boarded it up, and let it starve to death, or he die of dehydration. I can't, you know, that's only matter. But the point is, this thing was trapped in this, couldn't get out, enraged, and died in that state. And then along comes some, you know, spectral event. We say it's a full moon, something, and the spirit then rose, and then was able to walk the land once again and seek revenge. And it killed another one of the. the Farmer's children. Now he's got two dead children. So the player characters said they go defeat the the the, uh, the bull, and to do it properly, they had to lay the bull's spirit to rest. Essentially, and that doesn't necessarily mean combat. That could be burying the bull, or if you have someone in the party that has a connection with the spirit world or or the divine, you might find some other solution. It doesn't necessarily have to be combat. And again, that can be a low-level encounter. Um, of course, you can do that with spirit beings that are of the sapient variety. So it could be a spirit, a revenant of some variety that's looking for a lost item, revenge, justice, it could be any number of things. Maybe someone's name was besmirched upon death and it was such a, considered such a burden that they cannot rest until that name is made clean. Made clear, they're, they are cleared of that uh, criminal accusation or something like that. Or the, the, the smirch upon their reputation is wiped, wiped away. So those kind of things can all be low-level encounters. Of course, you can use them at higher levels. I actually had a revenant, it was a, a, a risen corpse, physical, corporeal, undead, actually walk up to a player character's house once, knock on the door, and they open it, and there's a zombie standing there asking them, asking the party for help. So I just I shoved the, the, the story right into their face, and he describes how he had been murdered by a partner. The partner then assumed his personality, Everything took took everything away from him, and went off and became him essentially. Um, and this guy wanted uh, vengeance. And again, the trigger mechanism can be anything you want it to be. Why did it take so long? It doesn't matter. It's a fantasy game. You can make it up. Um, oh, oh, yeah, oh, there we go. Manner just so I can take off. Give myself a little extra light. Um, so these are the kinds of things that I think are very useful for low level play. So. I want to open up the discussion, and I want to ask uh, people viewing this video, what do you like to use for low-level type encounters? And again, some of these things can be translated into modern or science fiction settings, low-level creatures, real-world obstacles, getting a bill paid, getting someone on a, a getting enough money raised to get someone bailed out of jail, um, you know, uh, helping someone escape from a debt that they owe someone who they, they, they can't pay back. Um, it could be, has someone been stuck in a position where they're running drugs or someone? How do they get this person out of the situation because the person decides they don't want to be in this? Um, helping someone to get out of a gang after they've become a member. These things can all be both low level and higher level adventures depending on the, the amount of severity involved and what the stakes are. And it can, again, it, it, the scale can be slid fairly easy by a GM to make it as dangerous or as, uh, or, or as benign as you want it to. Um, it could be something as simple, for example, helping someone get a, get a tattoo removed. I mean, depending on why is that tattoo there, there, what does that tattoo represent? How difficult is it going to be to get rid of? And what are you, how can that player characters help that person achieve that? So you can have the interpersonal connections be the adventure itself. So I'm opening the, the doors up. Woo, and the doors are open. Um, and so that we can have a discussion about what is or what are good encounters for low-level adventures, whether it be fantasy, science fiction, or in the modern world. Come on, folks. Give me your ideas. <laughs>